Hi everyone, so today I'll be showing you some uh, some basic uh, web scraping skills that you can use to scrape Nike and that's the example we're going to do today. Uh, I'll be using Python, so I've got the Python's website in front of me, so if you don't have Python you can download it here. If you want to see if you do have Python, you can open up a terminal. But I can spell terminal, terminal. Terminal or command prompt, depending on what OS you're using. You can type in Python, dash dash, version. It'll tell you what Python version you're using. So I'm using 3.9.2, and the latest one right now is 3.10.2. But uh, any version above 3.8, I would say, uh, should should work perfectly. Uh, another thing I want to mention is that uh, due to popular demand, uh, I've been to I've been developing some paid monitors, and I will be releasing them very very shortly. These are very competitively priced, probably the very, very, very cheap uh, compared to any competitors that are around. A lot of the, a lot of the funding will be to maintain all the servers, so it should be very, very cheap. Another thing I'll be doing is doing a giveaway shortly for some spots on those uh, monitors, and if you want to keep up to date with that, um, do subscribe and also join the Discord channel, uh, where you'll be notified when I release. And but also please subscribe if you enjoy some of my content, do like and comment and let me know what other videos, uh, video ideas you want me to do. And like I said before, I'm slowly going to start explaining how monitors work but I want to show you guys how to do some web scraping and then we'll go uh, a little bit into monitoring. Um, okay with that we can kind of get started. So like I said, uh, we'll be using Python and we're going to look at the Nike store. So. Let's pull up the Nike store. Here we go. So I've already loaded up the Nike store. Um, what you see here is I've got my developer tools open. How you can do that is, so I'm using Chrome. And with Chrome, if you click on the three dots at the top right, you go into more tools at the very bottom, it's develop there's a, a tab called developer tools. Um, all the browsers you use should have some sort of developer tools. Um, and they all work very similar, they all have the same, same sort of information. Another thing is that uh, right now uh, I'm using the uh, iPhone SE dimensions, that's why it looks quite small here. For me it just it just uh, makes life easier, I, I kind of like it a bit smaller so I can uh, increase the size of the developer tools. So what are we doing here, we're going to be looking at some of the network requests being made by the Nike site. Uh, in particular we I want to show you guys how we can uh, grab information from the search API so I've been talking about web scraping a little bit and you guys may not know what that is web scraping is when we want to grab information off a site programmatically so we, we want this to happen just automatically we're not copying and pasting it just does this by itself when you run the script so there's lots of different ways of doing that and lots of different uh, tools out there. I'll be showing you two different uh, tools. Um, but the first one I want to show you is how you can use, how you can find and use APIs on websites. So like I said, we'll use a search uh, API. Uh, actually, before we do that, I want to show you guys. At the top, we have network. If you click that, these are all the network requests being made by the site. Um, all these requests, a lot of them will be from third parties when information is being sent off. Sometimes they want to uh, collect how you're using their site, you know, your behavior. Some of them are needed for when you add stuff to your basket. It needs to send information to the server to say, oh, this guy here has put this in his basket. Um, there's there's a load of different information just being passed, sent to, um, sent back and forth. Uh, so a lot of it is quite redundant we don't need to have a look at it but it, we can just have that open um, I'm gonna clear it just so it's easy to see and we can just search for something let's search Jordan and now we've loaded Jordan's up okay if I just clear that you just might need to clear it a few times because a lot of things gets in across oh another thing to note is I'm looking at fetch slash XHR um, that just filters um, what we're looking into particular but if we just look at everything that's being sent across 
has a whole load of stuff. There's like images, JavaScript files, all sorts of stuff. Let's let's just look at this. Okay, so when you click on one of these requests, each of these is is uh, a URL and something's happening with that URL. Um, there are a load of different tabs that we can look at. The first one being headers. Headers um, kind of tells you what URL is being used, what it's being used for, and how um, what information is being sent across. So the first thing to look at is at the very top. There's always a request URL. This is what yeah what URL we're using. The request method uh, here it's a post request, um, but Okay, so with request methods, um, I'll explain two types, but there are there are loads out there. Um, there's a get request and a post request. A get request is when we just grab information from a site, whereas a post request is when you send something and then you get something in return. So in this case, we're sending whatever's in our payload here, this sensor data, to this URL, and then we're going to get something returned. And in this case, it's success equals true Ooh. I don't know what I did there um, so uh, some other tabs here so that's headers payload is what we're sending uh, what we're sending to the URL if it's a post request preview and response are the same thing so this is what we get in return uh, preview just um, lays it out nicely for us to, to use uh, and then there's a load of other things here that we don't really need to look at so now we've got this open how are we going to use it we now are just kind of working through each of these uh, requests to see is there any useful information we can grab out of it um, so if we just flick through let's go to the top this one here I think I feel I, I um, sorted it by name so this one here um, it's sending uh, it's a get request sending something I mean grabbing stuff from Nike's API and what we get in return is well I don't know but <laughs> like I said a lot of this stuff is just um, like behaviors and just other different pieces of information that are just not useful for us but we can just kind of flick through and see uh, what we have here. I want to try and use, so this is a third party, I want to try and find something which is uh, the Nike API. So right now none of these look like it. Um, I, I kind of know that because I've been messing around with the Nike API for a while. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom it's gonna load up more items and with that the website has to make a request again to the to the API. And here we go, here it is. This is the request that was made to grab more uh, items, and if we look at the preview, yeah, this is it. So under data, and under products, and then under products again, there are 24 different items that have been loaded up. So if we open one of them up, you can see, so this is a Jordan PSG uh, men's flight suit jacket. Um, and then it tells us it's in stock, in two different ways so in the label and also there's an in stock variable which is true we get some images we have colorways we have price we have a load of information here so now we have all this and we found the, the URL and we got the get that it's a get request how do we do this programmatically so like I said we're gonna use Python for this and if I just open up um, a VS code here we go we're going to start writing some code I'm just gonna create a new file I'm gonna say let's say Nike search dot py okay so we'll be using the requests library if you don't have that if you open up terminal you can do pip install requests I click enter I've already got it but uh, it'll start downloading requests for you and then we can just do HTML equals requests dot get and then requests dot get and then this URL here I'll explain 
a little bit what's going on here. Paste the whole thing in. Okay, so we're using a request library. And it, yep, here we go. It really tells you a bit of information here. Request is a HTTP library or it's in a Python for human beings. So we're doing a so because the method here is get, we're gonna use we're using a get request and we're getting some stuff from this URL here. So to make it nicer, I'm gonna do this. URL equals that and then say URL equals URL. Let me just close that, enlarge it a little bit. There we go. And if I just print uh, HTML that text because HTML will return an object and we want a text um, attribute of that. Uh, we can print that out. So I put the one. And it gives me all this. This is everything. So we can already see data, products, and under products we got a dic um, an array of products here. So this is quite hard to work with and it's not nice to look at. So we'll be using another library called JSON. This is, a th I'm pretty sure it's a built-in library, um, which just uh, allows you to ha uh, work with uh, JSON objects. JSON being um, basically dictionary key value pairs, so it, uh, dictionaries in Python. So what we can do here is say, let's say output, output equals JSON that loads html.text and then with that we can start using it just like a normal dictionary so we can do print uh, output and let's have a look so if we look at preview to let's okay what we want to try and do is let's just grab the first uh, product so data products then products and then the first one here so that's what we're going to do we're going to write data so we'll first filter for data then we go to products and we'll go to products again and we get the first one of those and if I print that it should literally just print just the first uh, product information and that's what we get here so we've only got one yeah there we go and this has been the PSG men's flight suit jacket just like we said here but open to it yep jordan psg men's flight suit jacket and that's it and then with that we can grab um other piece of information within this so if i want the, the title i can just write the title here yep. and let me clear this and if i run it again there we go it just sent me the title and I can do this. I think it's called the subtitle. Yeah, subtitle. There you go. Men's flight suit jacket. And that's how you can kind of use this and grab bits of information um, from this API. So if we really look into the how the API works, so it's just getting information from this URL. So everything at our query is made through this URL. So if we kind of look into what is happening here you can see it says uh, country equals GB so I'm in the UK so it's grabbing it's looking at um, stuff from Great Britain Ooh. oh sorry about that let's go back um, again filtering for marketplace GB version for language uh, English GB there's a lot of other things here. Search terms, Jordan. So this is where it only filters for Jordan. So you can change that. Anchor is 24. Um, I'll explain that in a second. And count is 24. So count being the number of items it's going to spit out. So right now it's only sending us 24 items. I think the maximum you can get at a time is 60. So you can we can change that to 60. And count is actually um, so each time you uh, okay so if you think about it Nike has you know thousands and thousands of products but you can only request for a certain number of them at a time so imagine we want to request the top fit the first 50 
but then we want the next 50. So you need to know that, okay, we've already loaded up these 50 and we want to start from here and load the next 50. So Anchor tells us, okay, we've already loaded 24 products. Lo uh, give us the next 24, which is what count tells us. Uh, I mean, the next 60 in this case, uh, from the 24 mark. So from the 24th product in, in Nike's database, give us the next and then the next, if that makes sense. Hopefully that, that does make sense. Um, actually, let, let me let me show you. Let's let's say count equals five, and we'll make anchor equals zero. And actually, let's just change this. Let's say anchor like this. And we're going to be using something called uh, oh. so, we're going to be using something called a. Um, F strings, so format strings. So I've I've put in anchor and count uh, as variables within curly brackets. What we can do here is if we put an F just before the string, those then become variables. So right now I haven't initiated it, but if I do that now, anchor equals, anchor equals let's say by uh, zero actually count equals five yeah there we go okay and actually let's say two for now just makes it easy to see and if I run this so it's only spitting out two products um, actually this is quite hard to see so let's do this let's for uh, I in so actually look for item in this print item and we what should we have we should have the title uh no subtitle actually let's uh, let's have a look at this Okay, so we get women's shoe and women's police top. I think actually if we do this, it would be easier. Uh, title. Subtitle. Yeah, oh yeah, Jordan 1, elevate, women's shoe, and that. So that's from anchor being 0. If we change that to 1, we're going to get this item and then the next one. Because we said okay give us all the items from uh, the, the, the next product downwards so yeah we get the fleece top and then the, the graphic tee I think I've I've explained that a little bit better so that, mean, that means you can just grab literally everything off Nike if you keep on changing the, the anchor Okay, so that's one way we can kind of scrape Nike using the Nike API. Uh, another thing I want to show you is um, kind of using something called uh, Beautiful Soup, which is a library in Python that allows you to pass HTML. So let's let me show you how that works. Instead of using any APIs in network requests, we're going to be using this just the pure HTML of the site. And okay, let me clear this. Uh, but we're still using requests here. What we're going to do is first we'll make a request to just the page itself. So whatever's in your in your address bar, take that. And we'll make that URL equals that, and paste it in there. Um, and if we just print that html.text you're just going to see the, all the html that we see here and it's going to be quite disgusting there we go just a load of stuff and that's not helpful at all what we can do is use beautiful soup so in terminal to install it I'm pretty sure it um, pip install es4 and I've already got it um, and that's what we can use from this for import beautiful soup. So we'll import it first. 
And then we do soup equals beautiful soup. You give it the ht the the HTML, so HTML.txt, and we're using the HTML parser. Okay, so now um, this allows us to kind of work with the uh, HTML on the site a bit better. Let me uh, close a few things here. Okay, so let me show you how we can grab some of the products in a different way. So now we've we've kind of got this site. I want to grab each of these products. Uh, if we click on this tool here, it allows us to select different elements on the page. So if I select this, it's selecting on this uh, figure here. Let me uh, close that. It's, I think there's a bit bigger. So each of these are product cards. So each, if I, if I highlight, if I go, if I hover above each one, it's highlighting a different product on the page. So this is where all the information is held. So we can open up, open them up, and see all the different information here. So this is the price. So if I go, open all these tags up, we can see the price here. Then we can see the color count. The is it color count? I believe this is the color, the number of colors. Um, and we can just see all the information here. So let's try and grab some of this information. So first, let's try and grab this. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for things which uh, are common within all these products. So this class, product card, and all these different IDs. Are common across all of them so if we use that uh, let's say products equals soup dot find all and so this is a div so this is we first put in what the element is and then we can put in a dictionary to tell it what specifically ma uh, makes this div different from all the other divs so we can say class is that oops, sorry. yeah okay and what we can do is then print the length of products and we should expect it to to be something like 24 ish I guess I think that's how many they load at a single time Okay, we get zero. Why is the case? Why is that the case? Let's have a look. Maybe some sometimes it can't grab these. Let's let's try this one instead. Product card body. So it's a div again, and it's just changing the class. So let's just change that. To that. Let's clear this. Print twenty four. There we go. Okay, so if we have a look at one of these products, uh, print products, and the first one only. Okay, so we just get the HTML of that. And what we can do is actually, we can grab different elements of this. So if we want the the title, the the name of it. So this is. Can I highlight? No, I can't highlight it. I want the title of this. It's it's found within in this um, element here. So all we can do is just grab this and say um, actually let, let's print let's go through all of them. So for product in products uh, product dot find so, so the difference between find and find all, find all literally looks through all the HTML and grabs every element which has uh, which has all this, whereas find will just find the first one, and it'll stop there, and it'll just return one element. So find, this is a class is a, oh, 
card overlay and we want just the text of that I'm going to print that Let's print that. There we go. So it went through all 24 of the, the products and it just printed out the name as you see on the site here. Like uh, this name here, A Driven One. Um, and there it is, there's that. And the next one is Jordan 23 Engineered, Jordan 23 Engineered. And all of them are printed down here. Okay, so these are two different tools you can use to scrape sites. So using um, network, looking at network requests and looking at APIs uh, to grab information. Um, but then also you can use something called Beautiful Soup, which passes just HTML, pure HTML, uh, and you can grab different elements uh, like that. So yeah, hopefully um, you've enjoyed the video. So. I've just given you a little introduction into web scraping, uh, in particular for Nike. Um, so what you can you do with this from here? Web scraping is kind of used for uh, people use for research, for doing data analysis, for machine learning. Um, we can use it for monitors and bots and that sort of thing. Um, but do let me know what you guys make. Uh, there's so many different things you can make, things that haven't been done before, uh, and it'll be interesting to see. The, little, the, the the products that you the, the projects that you come up with uh, if you do have any questions if something I mentioned wasn't uh, I didn't wasn't clarified properly do let me know and I'll try and answer all your queries in the comments um, as soon as possible thank you guys hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time